Who am I using? Your own. And I shared, I think. You did? Yay, it worked. Oh my God, it worked. <laughs> well, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, to our basic composite uh, learning workshop. Uh, thanks to Umit for giving this all a, an air of credence as he always does. Uh, it's always good to kind of help out with the club members. Um, so I basically, what you're gonna see is the Ajave that I worked up. And uh, basically we're gonna talk very quickly until we get down into the Photoshop stuff. But uh, Marianne, are, are you using Lightroom? I am. Okay. So uh, what I did in, in the Lightroom portion of it, you'll see it. It's, uh, it's focused just for doing all your editing in there and then exporting up to Photoshop as layers within, uh, uh, within Photoshop. Okay. I, it's, it's real easy to do. It's all explained in the job aid. I'm trying to keep this real simple, but I know as we go along, there's a lot of shortcuts in here that uh, you may have kind of asked me and some of you say, huh? Huh? What was that? But uh, it's all good, and it's all in the job aid. So I'll show the job aid right up till we start doing the uh, actual images, and then uh, we'll kind of cut from there. Uh, I, I, I saw this photo a couple of weeks ago, and, uh, you know, all of us old folks get those daily jokes and, uh, from our buddies, and, uh, and this one just made me laugh. But the uh, funny thing about it was, I was just starting to work on the job aid, and I thought to myself, that is really a good composite. Well, let's kind of hope it was a composite. <laughs> okay, my joke. So uh, we're going to basically just talk about settings very, very quickly, go into Lightroom, and then 90% uh, of this is in Photoshop. So uh, with the settings basically there, uh, Umid and Hylas, uh, y'all were at the uh, 4th of July Marietta. Uh, I took a couple of notes on some of the things that we picked up on there. Hylas, I don't know if I added, uh, I think I said bring a flashlight. I don't remember if I had saying bring a headlight or a small flashlight. Uh, okay, I should add headset to uh, that one. I, I think that's what you had on your head, wasn't it? Me? No, uh, uh, I didn't. Uh, uh, I neglected that. Yeah, I think Umid had it. So yeah, uh, I, I had that flashlight and the headlamp. Okay. And uh, and Marianne Umid taught me uh, when we did Star Trails last year. Always use a uh, use a red filter so you don't right. you don't upset your fellow uh, cameramen shooting these uh, Star Trails or whatever. Well, or saves your, your, saves your night vision too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, just a quick page. Uh, my settings are up here. If I can, uh, Hylos, when you were shooting your fireworks, uh, like the ones behind you, what, what settings were you using? I was using a, a remote release. And when they would flash, I would trigger it and then cut it off. There was no particular time frame. So would you say three seconds or five? Three, yeah, three, maybe five at the most. Okay. Omid, uh, how are you shooting fireworks? Uh, I was shooting at five seconds. That was my primary setting. I played with, you know, a few 20 seconds, a few 10 seconds, but my primary was about uh, five seconds. Oh, can you keep this out in case it rains? Thank you. Uh, Rick, you, you've shot fireworks before. What kind of settings would you use? Yeah, I was just trying to remember that while you guys were talking. I'm thinking I was shooting more toward the low end, more like three to five seconds. Okay. I guess the reason why, uh, and I was like Umid, I was shooting 10 seconds and 20. Uh, I, To be honest with you, I really couldn't tell the difference between 10 and 20, but I think uh, with the little longer settings, I was getting multiple bursts in the frame instead of just the one burst, I think. At least that's what it looked when I shot another fireworks when I was using three seconds for that one. So whatever. Okay, so just information here. 
Uh, hi, Lois. I included a link, a hyperlink there about the release timer uh, that's available out on BH if you guys are into it. Of course, those of you with the uh, newer cameras, uh, the envelometer is built into the camera. And, and for example, with uh, if I shoot continuous shooting, I can basically set it for 10 seconds and it'll just keep doing it. So there's a bunch of options. I personally prefer just to push uh, with my fingers so I don't get all that dead time, but that's just me. Okay, so Marianne, uh, this is really talking to you. And uh, uh, so basically you've got your uh, images, you got your uh, memory card, you plug it in, you do the import. And all I'm saying here is up at the very top uh, with the uh, first image is uh, when you're in import over on the right side, there's a block for keywords. And mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it may be a good idea if you have uh, something in particular you want to, like fireworks, so you can kind right. of, I typically try and put down the uh, geographical location like for example, when we did the uh, did the rock garden a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. I, I said the rock garden, comma, and then the city. Uh, I think that was Calhoun, wasn't it? Calhoun. Okay, so I just did it like that. And then to kind of summarize what else we did, I went quickly through my images and I assigned a number two to the ones that I wanted to use. And I typically use three if I'm going to use it in competition or if I want to print it. Now that leaves me four and five stars. I can, I've can, i never used more than four stars ever. So just, just ideas for you when you're working with Lightroom. Uh, down here in this section, I basically had some settings when I had the fireworks up and just kind of worked in there. And of course the, uh, the mask function in uh, Lightroom, I just love it, just love it. And uh, as you kind of see with the shift W, I'm trying to show you what the keyboard shortcuts are. Uh, mm -hmm. Your eyes will glaze over if you if, if you try and remember them all. But uh, when we got to Photoshop, I tried to put them in a little keyboard thing that you'll see. Uh, texture for sharpening is a great one to use because it really doesn't seem to, um, what's the word Rick uses? It really doesn't seem to crunch your image. Uh, when you use clarity, you know, it, 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 uh, it extenuates the difference between the blacks and white. And dehaze is perfect for your skies. It adds a nice blue to it, stuff like that. But I recommend texture. You can jump up to 60. But really, with uh, clarity, I would do 10 to 15. So all this is in the job aid that you're going to be getting. Uh, I talk a little bit about the mask, which is very, very similar. And I love this, that, uh, that the mask icon looks exactly like it does in Photoshop. So really, if you kind of learn how to use it in Lightroom, it's a great way for you to kind of step in to the Photoshop one, which honestly is, can be a lot more intimidating, but uh, it's a great way to kind of go with it. The one thing I noticed, Hylos, when I was shooting at Marietta, for some reason, I always leave mine on auto white balance. And my rationale is I'm shooting raw, so I can tone it down. It doesn't really affect anything. But I noticed on my fireworks uh, that had yellow at, at Marietta, I was getting a kind of a golden glow that was over all the other colors. So I just took my color temperature and just nudged it down to the left, to the blue. And it just, it just did a great job. So these are all things that I kind of did in, in Lightroom. Uh, Marianne, I think we talked before in the class using Lightroom. If uh, Before you go over there, uh, what, what was, the auto, in the most case, your average uh, automatic balance? I think it was 5,200. And you took it down to 43 or so, or? Well, uh, I, I think it was like 52 and I dropped it down to 48.95. Okay, it was just, it was really just a little twitch. As soon as I saw blue stand out, because one of the fireworks was kind of like red and blue, uh, I, I knew I was there. So this is pretty much it. Uh, but Marianne, like we talked before about Photoshop when we were doing 
the macros with Umit. If, yeah. if you go in and select the ones that you want to use on the composite, click on one, hold down control key and click on the other. And then on either two, just right click. And you know how you get the edit in? For 99% of the stuff I do, I just said edit in Adobe Photoshop. Mm, yeah. But here it's a drop down to the very bottom. And you do that thing where you edit it as layers. And that way, when you get to Photoshop, you don't have to add, you don't have to add one into the other one. So, because you want to have the layers all in one, one file. So that's pretty much Lightroom. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it, but that's a real quick overview. Thank you. Uh, here are, I kind of went through everything that I was kind of doing uh, for these two quick exercises. And I found out these were keys that I use all the time. Uh, you know, you, you always look at these things and you see why is it, why is it the letter V for move? Right? You know, because they've already used up the letter M for something else. That's the reason why it is. But uh, uh, just a real quick summary of, of all the keys that I use. And down here, the brush colors, these are the ones that when you're working in masking, because when you work in masking, well, let me go back. In Photoshop, if you open up a regular image and you look on the left side, it kind of defaults to black and white, black the foreground, white the background. Uh, but you can change those colors to whatever you want. If you're adding type, you want red type, you can change it. But when you click on the mask icon, you're dealing entirely in grayscale. So you will only see black and white, which honestly makes it easier for me. And that's just an explanation right here. Uh, I find uh, when I'm doing masking, if I want to swap the colors real quick, for example, if I have a white uh, mask, meaning everything is visible, and I want to hide something with black, and I start hiding it, and I make a mistake, I can hit X and it'll flip my foreground color so I can go back and reveal it. So X is a great way to flop, flop your black and whites in this. Um, I find down here, uh, I think everyone knows Microsoft Word Control A is, is to pick everything. Uh, within Photoshop, there's times when you've got a you got your marching ants going around a local selection and you want to turn it off because you want to work on everything. Uh, that shortcut is Control D. Don't, don't ask me what the D stands for. I don't know. Deselect, I guess. Uh, and so there's things. What I find is when I work with masking, uh, one of the tools I use occasionally is if you if you have a layer and you have a selection, uh, marching ants around this area, if you press Control J on that layer, it'll take your selection and put it up in a new layer. So it just copies it and puts it up there for you. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that here a little bit later. So great tool. So on this page, it's just basically some uh, editing tools. I really wanted to keep it simple because I don't want to overwhelm you guys uh, who are kind of new to Photoshop like me, but uh, that's how it kind of works. Okay, so on the job aid here, I am going to move it over to the other screen and I'm just going to start up uh, I swear to God, uh, just give me a sec. I'm going to stop the share for a moment. I was, you would think after a year and a half, I would learn how to do up the. Uh... So Mary, in difference to you, I'm going to start up Lightroom. And from Lightroom in the first exercise, we're going to take three images and just do a light and blending mode on it. So I'm going to pick uh, this one. Uh, this is 29. And I think 36 and 39 are the three images that I'm going to take and just do a quick blend uh, using light. Very quick. There's no uh, there's no stuff to it. So Marianne, uh, where do I go from here if I want to have all these in one layer in uh, Photoshop? Uh, you would you go straight to Photoshop. You remember down here? Edit in. Oh, edit. Yes. Yeah, edit so we'll put them all in one file, but with three options. 
this is this is really cool. It will save you time. Uh, Umid, I, I never knew this until I was getting ready for the course, but uh, hmm. uh, when you're within Photoshop, it's in the job aid. If you click on file, uh, scripts, and then uh, load files into stack, that's that's the way you can add all the files into one layer. So, Hey, uh, hey Pat, show, show that uh, again. It's op open in... Open as layers, is that what it is? Yeah, in Lightroom. Yeah. yeah. I so, mean, edit, edit in layer, edit as. Yeah, so instead of doing Photoshop, like I do uh, open as layers years. in Photoshop. Got it. Mm. And that'll do it for you. Layers. So I'm going to minimize this puppy. And now we're in the world of Photoshop. So, Pat, uh, yeah. I, I usually come from Bridge rather than Lightroom. And the interface is essentially the same. And when you go from bridge, you say, you select like you do in Lightroom, the three, four, five, whatever images. And then you go to Photoshop and open as layers in Photoshop. So okay. it, it does the same thing. Okay, thank you. I'll so you don't have to do the scripts and, uh, um, you know, thing at, at all. Okay, so it's file open as layers. Okay. Uh, no, not there. But he it, does it from uh, bridge. From bridge. Okay, so yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Gotcha. Yeah, bridge is the same thing as Lightroom. Okay, so I'm over here. If you guys notice, uh, I've got uh, file lending in 29, 36, and 39. So uh, all the images, because I shot them on a tripod, just like you guys did, they're all aligned because I shot them on the same tripod. If you try to hold it, there's an option in Photoshop. You can, uh, you have to basically select all three of them and then you would hit edit and then you would do uh, arrange. Well, I don't have that on my light. Let me do that and I'll show you. So if you have more than one selected, the, the options change for you. So if you do edit, and now you have the option to auto align the layers. So if, if you were just trying to use a camera and you got it pretty good on top of a brick wall or something, you may want to go through and align it. This is not in the job aid. So just, just kind of a freebie. So let's talk images right now. So right now, are we seeing all three images or just the top one? Top one. Right. And Hilos, why is that? Because it's going to, the bottom one is your background. Okay. And the other two are just stacked on top of each other. Right. So if you guys take a look here, if you notice that the opacity for the layer that I've picked is set to 100%. Uh, in our next exercise, we'll change this down to 50. But for right now, this is how easy it is. If you have fireworks that are spread out a bit, which I really don't have, but you'll get the idea of it. So I'm gonna click on the blending mode right here. So see where it says normal? That's, that's the blend mode right there. And I'm just gonna change it to lighten. Uh, as Uma will tell you, screen works pretty good too, but, but really uh, just go and play with it and find out which one works best for your situation. So right now I've hit lighten. So now because I lighten, it's taking everything that's light and showing it through through the layers. And that's it. It's done. Any questions before we end the Zoom session? <laughs> ah, you guys are great. Thank you. Thank you for putting up with me. Uh, but uh, really, though, that, that's really how easy it is to do a basic one. So I know you guys are sitting there saying, Pat, you know, th that was all great and everything. But uh, show me when I want to spread the fireworks out a little bit. So like Hylos on the back of your, uh, your, your Zoom thing, that's kind of what you did, wasn't it? You basically moved one of the layers over? Yeah, yeah. You use the M move or the space bar will move it. Okay. So now I am going to exit.
out of uh, Photoshop. There's no magic. And I'm gonna go back in the Lightroom and this time I think it's 29 to 32. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna click on both these. So Marianne, you're up again. I wanna take these as layers into Photoshop. What do I do on one of these two selected images? Right click and then go to uh, edit and layers in Photoshop. Damn, girl. You got it. That's perfect. So uh, th it took me years to figure this out. I was probably paranoid like you were. And I found myself saving the files by a different name altogether. Uh, but what I found out was whenever you do Lightroom and it sends the files up to Photoshop it, and then you save it back, you exit out and you save it back, it saves it as either TIFF or a DNG or PSD, uh, mm -hmm. depending on the option that you set. So for this one right now, I'm going to go back and on the other screen here, I've, I've got the job aid, so I'm going to follow it along here. So job eight says, make sure 29 is up on top. 29, we're just gonna move over to the left and then leave the one underneath it exactly where it is. So we've moved, well, I don't have to move it, it's right there. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the opacity and I'm gonna drop it down to about 50% because now I can see the other one starting to come through. Can you guys kind of see the other one? It's getting mm -hmm. a little bit fuzzy now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's starting to pop through. Uh, so I dropped it down to 50. And now uh, what I'm going to do is you can either go up to the four-headed arrow, kind of like northeast, west, and south compass, I guess, or you can press the letter V, as in Victor. And then, do you believe in magic? <laughs> so, uh, so just like Ilus did, I turned off the, I lowered the transparency so I could keep my reference point on the one on the bottom and the top and just kind of move it on over to kind of get situated to where I want it to be. So once I'm done, I would restore the opacity. So uh, there it goes. And now you're thinking, Pat, what do we do now? It looks ugly. Well, now I, if you notice in the last exercise, how we showed our fireworks was using the light and blending mode. This time we're gonna use the masking tool. This is kind of intimidating the first couple of times you use it. Uh, Marianne, I, I think the greatest thing for me was I, I didn't realize you had to click on the masking icon when you were brushing with the brush. And I didn't know you're supposed to click on the image portion of the layer if you wanna do global stuff. So. It's, it's kind of confusing, but I've documented everything in the uh, job aid. So all you do is just click on the top one, which is this one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask everything except for the fireworks. So I'm going to click on this guy and click on the mask icon right down here. Do you all see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to click on it. If you notice, it created a white box. So Rick and I worked on a job aid, uh, I don't know, what was it four or five months ago? Uh, Rick, when we're doing that uh, masking within Lightroom. Yeah. And we're doing mask. So guys, here's the word. White reveals, black conceals on that layer. So if you look right now, this mask is white. So what that means is it's showing everything on that layer. Uh, and that's all you're seeing right here because we move the layer over. So there. So if I were to move it back, see how it, it covers up everything. But because I moved it over, I kind of know where it's supposed to go. I've got it right here. So what I want to do is I want to conceal everything except for the fireworks. So I have a white layer. But if you look over here for the foreground and the background colors, you see how the uh, foreground color is black. Yes. So if I paint on this white, it's going to reveal the bottom layer coming through. So I've got the layer bit, bit brush. So I can go up and click on the brush icon, 
or I can press the letter B. And there I go. Uh, in the job aid, I recommend some of the settings. Uh, this is pretty good because I've been testing it out. But I want you to watch the magic. So are you all ready? Yes. OK, wow. thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> so if you notice, so I'm painting with black. So black reveals what's underneath. Oops. Uh, Conceals. You guys seeing how it reveals the fireworks underneath? So obviously I'm not gonna get that top of that steeple and the other one, but what I need to do is get everything on the entire layer and just not what you kind of see. The reason being is I've got two on the bottom of each of the images, I've got the background down here. So I wanna make sure that um, I've got this block because we're painted over, so we kind of do it this way. So if you look at my icon over here, you see how it's got the white circle? Mm -hmm. So what that's yeah. telling me, it's only revealing the fireworks in this little area right over here. So I'm thinking it's right about there. Bing, bada, boom, we got it. So uh, it's all gone. So just for good measure, I kind of go back over it again. So right now, Pat, the, yeah. If you option click on the mask, right. It shows you what you painted on the mask and you can see what you have missed or what you have blocked. That's cool. So I think uh, Omit is having a, a learning workshop, Art 101. Uh, on, only for Mr. Fahey. <laughs> Thanks so much. Ah, still missed the bottom somewhere. So if you notice, uh, well, in the job aid, I feathered to 50%, and that kind of gives a little bit of fuzz going around, so the effect is not uh, dramatic. But if you notice here, I kind of chopped the fire, uh, a little bit of the firework off right here. So I'm going to press the letter X to reverse the colors right here. See how white is now in the foreground? So I'm going to paint with a little bit of white right here. So I get, get the rest of that fireworks that happens to be right around there. So thanks, Uma. Uh, Alt, I click on the mask again, and there we go. To get rid of the top of get rid of the top of the steeple, you just have to go down and reduce your brush size way down, don't you? Yeah. Yep, sure can. I'm just going to show you. Uh, and again, this is all about showing you how the different tools work. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, the eraser tool on the top layer uh, because, and I have to click on the actual image icon over here, and I'm going to press Control Plus three times, I think. So one, two, three. And with that, and if you press the space bar, you can kind of do it. It's just like in Lightroom, exactly the same. So what uh, Hylos adroitly said was, uh, just kind of lower your brush size just a little bit. And I'm gonna use the eraser tool. Guys, there, There are a hundred ways in Photoshop to do the same thing. So there's many different ways of getting to your same goal. So I'm using the eraser because it's only doing it on the top layer and the bottom layer, if it shows through, that's just fine for me. So kind of, kind of like Kylos was saying, I'm taking out the steeple. I'm going up here and taking out a little bit of that, those trails coming up. And we'll lower my brush size a little bit. So guys, with the eraser, if I make a mistake, what's, what is the control and what letter would I use? Z. You're absolutely right. So control Z undo works with it all. So like on this one, I went over too far. I was gonna press the letter Z, kind of come back down, bing, bada, boom. I mean, it's good enough for government work. I did it the last time. It was a little bit nicer. But uh, 
again, could I have continued using the mask and going back up there and doing it? Of course. I just want to show you how, to, how the eraser tool kind of works. But I want to let you know that it is destructive. Whereas if you save an image with the mask on it, you can always go back through and add white or black to it to bring out details. When you do the eraser, unless you save it as a smart object, um, you're kind of screwed. So uh, I knocked out the steeple that we had right there. Could I use the stamp tool? So I'm going to press the letter F, uh, S, as in Sierra or stamp. And I'm just going to click here, hold down the alternate key and click. And I'm just going to add this just a little bit, now just a little bit to kind of extend it out a little bit. And I could do the same here as well. So just let you know, stamp is kind of a very cool thing to uh, kind of do as well. So to go back out of Zoom, you just press Control Zero, and it takes you right back out to your full image. Any questions so far? We're good so far. I'm good. I, I mean, I'm hoping you guys are picking up on really how easy this is. So uh, if you notice, I'm still clicked on the actual image, not the mask, and I'm going to introduce you to something that's called curves. Now, in Photoshop, just like in Lightroom, uh, you have different ways of controlling your changes to the dark, the midtones, and the highlights or the brights. And uh, in Photoshop, it's exactly the same way. In Photoshop, it's called curves. And to invoke curves, you just press Control M as a mic, and let me move it over on your screen. So here are the curves right here. So this is saying on this layer, uh, this is how it's basically set up on an angle. And if I want to change it, I basically just click anywhere on these points. So this is what I would consider black, mid-tone, and brighter whites. Uh, there's probably a different word for it, but that's what I got. If you notice right here, there's the output. So if I'm click on something and I'm dragging it up or down, see how the values change? And you can see the numbers right there. In this one, I recommend the low be 41. So if you notice, see how the sky gets a little bit darker? And then I recommend doing the midpoint at 144. Oop, that was quick. And the uh, white at two at two 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 twenty eight. So all I'm trying to show you here is, and again, you can kind of play with this however you want. I think actually that's probably it right there, forty seven. Um, Curves is a great way to target a specific way in Photoshop. And just like Umit and Rick will tell you, and just all of us, uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat in Photoshop. You can use levels. Uh, you can target down on this scale. I will tell you, I've tried this for years, and I've never really quite gotten it down like I should. But you can target it down so it only targets a certain range. Umid, have you ever played with the, uh, I'm trying to think of the word is, to where you narrow what you're actually talking to here? Uh, yeah, that's the little thing on the bottom left corner. But before you go to that one, uh, the levels that you have applied is destructive application. You, have, you can also apply it non-destructively. So you need to go to adjustments panel. That's on your right hand side. Yeah, right here. Oops, I got to close this. Uh, let me cancel yeah, that. Cancel that. Okay. So, so we'll adjustments. We're back before. And uh, which one do you want me to adjustments use? Adjustments at the above. Go up, 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 up. Ah, okay. Okay. And then click on the icon that looks like curves. So you guys see it, it's kind of like an S shape right here with the grid. Yeah. Okay, so that puts a new adjustment layer and does not 
alter the actual image like it was doing uh, when Pat was working on. Hmm. So if you don't like it, you can always come back, you know, three hours later, three days, three years later, the image is not affected itself. You can change the curve and save as a different uh, layer. So he can do the same thing he did earlier and it will look exactly the same. The difference is the image is not altered. That image is getting pretty nice, Pat. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, hey, Umid, how can I link this to the just to the layer underneath it? Okay. Uh, no, no, get out of there. Okay. Uh, option. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, option and click in the middle between the two layers. Yep. Okay. And guys, and the reason why I like doing it that way, if you notice, uh, before it was really getting kind of dark everywhere. So I just want to constrain the adjustment just just to this layer. So you can kind oh, of play around. Sorry interrupting, this. guys. Yeah, that's nice. I, I don't think I've ever linked them before, but I knew it was there. So that's good. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Umit. That's good. Good to know. Let me write that down. I may modify the job aid to where we just go there. So as long as I keep it, keep it in a PSD format, uh, it'll be there, right? Correct. As long as you save it out as a PSD, it will be saved as layers and it will be always an editable layer. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we did the eraser tool. Um, we zoomed in, we knocked it out. Okay. Um, at this point, what I would do is I'm just going to combine all the merge the visible layers. Now you can go up under select. Uh, no, it's under layer, under layer, and then you can go down here to merge visible. So it's going to take all three layers and smack it down. Uh, me, I'm a sucker for keyboard shortcuts. So in the job aid, shift control E will do it. And it just, if you notice, it took all three layers and merged it down. But the downside is, unless you go back in history, uh, what you've done is basically locked down. So right now I can press Control Z and fine tune with the, uh, with the adjustment layer a little bit more. But for right now, it, it's good to go. So Shift Pat. Control E. Yeah. Command Option Shift E. Say again. Command. Option, Shift, E. Okay, and that kicks the... Uh... So that creates a new layer combining all the layers below it. Okay, perfect. So again, if you save it as a PSD, all the layers will be preserved. Thanks, Uman. Sure. Oh, and by the way, that, by the way, everybody, Umit's got the, uh, got the intermediate uh, stuff coming up with Photoshop. Yeah, I was just I was just thinking that Umit Umit is uh yeah he, he probably can't. never played with Photoshop before in his life. It's kind of the impression <laughs> I think. Yeah he does a good job with it. Okay so right now I'd like to use the stamp tool and just kind of knock out these these lights down here. So what I can do is go up and click on the stamp tool icon Marianne or I can just press the letter S as in stamp and it jumps to it. Like let's say for example, I was on the tamp type layer. If I break it, uh, see how it jumps right to the stamp tool. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you right click, you can always adjust your size. I'm just gonna make it a little bit different, just to let you guys see it. And wherever you want to sample from, you hold down the alternate key, click. And now whenever I paint over the stuff down here, if you notice, it's just, sampling right above it. So with this one right here, bing bada boom, knocked it out. Now I'm gonna show you something that um, uh, is another tool. It's called the Dodge tool. And to invoke that, the Dodge tool, it's kind of confusing, but not really, because under the O for Dodge tool, you have not only, come on buddy, you have not only the dodge tool, but you have the burn tool and the sponge tool. Uh, for those of you who did film, remember when you're in the enlarger 
and you used your hands to kind of uh, block the light from everywhere except where you wanted to burn it in. That's the icon right here. And the dodge tool was the popsicle we used uh, as you're giving the full exposure, you would hold back exposure at, to whatever was under the popsicle to kind of dodge out, dodge it out. Now the sponge tool is kind of misleading them in saturation. So for this one, we just want to click on the dodge tool. I'm going to increase the size down a little bit. Oops, not that much. And what I want to do right here is, I think having a little bit, yeah, I'm looking at the top. Uh, make sure this is in the job aid. Make sure the range of shadows, the exposure is 100%. Of course, you can fool this however you want. But if you notice what I'm trying to do is bring a little bit more detail to this uh, building right here with the steeple. So, uh, and again, every time that you release the mouse, you kind of start over again. I mean, so I'm going to increase the hard. Yeah, I believe it is zero. It's all good. So this guy really must be burned out on the second edition. So if you guys notice, I'm just adding a little bit more detail to it. So when we do the final product, it doesn't look like a bunch of stuff here. You can see a little bit of detail with the building. Now, you guys noticed that I did a little bit of overlap on the edge. You see it right here? Mm -hmm. Non buono, that is not good. This is not in the job aid. So I'm gonna go back, press consult, and I'm gonna go to history and do away with all the dodges that we did. And I want to show you a neat trick that you'll probably use sometime in your life with uh, Photoshop is you use a thing called, called the lasso, and this is the rectangular one. So I'm just going to add this. So if I want to add to the selection, I hold down the shift key and go on up here. And this is how, if you notice now, now when I use the dodge tool, see how it's, it's only going to happen within this area. So again, I'm going to click on the dodge tool. I think it's active. And I'm just, oops. Click on the dodge tool. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger since I can, I don't have to worry about screwing up the edges. So yes, there's a little bit of trees on the right side. I kind of know where they are. But I think when I get finished here, you'll kind of appreciate it that the, uh, that it's, it doesn't look quite as messy. It looks a little bit more professional. So Marianne, if I were to go over here and start doing the dodge tool over here, would it work? It would, if you don't have any other objects but the tree. Right, so if you notice over here, see where the marching ants are? Mm -hmm. The marching ant says, Pat, as long as these ants are marching around this, and you do any changes, it's only going to be within the end. So if I go over here and I'll do what you're saying, you see how I'm going like crazy trying oh, to Oh, I it? see. Yes. It doesn't so it won't that's, do anything. That's the nice thing about about doing a a selection is that it kind of works pretty good. So I'm going to press control H just to hide what I've done so far. Uh, it's it's good enough for, for government work or club work, I should say. I'm going to press Control D as in deselect. So if you notice now, the, the marching ants are nowhere on the page. And I'm just going to give a quick one or two times over this, this building that's right here as well. So just kind of add it that way. And oh, yeah. Uh, one thing I love about Photoshop way over uh, Lightroom is the sharpen tool, but you really got to be careful with it. If you notice, I dropped the strength down to 18 for another image I was using. So I'm going to raise it up to 50, and I'm just going to kind of lightly go over just the bursting. And you, you will really be surprised at how it just adds a nice feel for it. Moment, what are, what are your feelings about the sharpen tool?
I don't use it. Okay. Your photos are that good? No. Um, I, I use Topaz Sharpen uh, okay. if I have to sharpen it all together. So do I. Uh, or I do use the sharpening filter overall, but I rarely ever use the sharpening tool that's on the left. That's a brush. So right now with the entire image, if you notice if I raise the midtones, I can raise it in here. Uh, but we've been screwing with this so much, I better just leave it alone. And there is there there it is. So for Lightroom, Marianne, when you're in Photoshop, you just click File, Exit, and Answer Yes. It's going to take the same file name and save it back, and it as not as a well, actually, it kind of does as a composite, but um, it's kind of hidden from you unless you go back into Photoshop and choose Edit without the Lightroom adjustments. But but that's how easy it is. For all you other guys who use Photoshop, you just know file save as and throw it wherever you got it. Well, when you're doing camera raw and you bring it into Photoshop and you do a file save or save as, does it default to where the file originally came from? Correct. Okay. So I, I always do a save as, I don't do save and uh, well, I'm sorry, let me put it this way. If you are coming out of coming from raw, uh, even if you do save, it will save it as a PSD or JPEG or some other format, not as a raw file. So doing a save is okay. But if you have come into it from JPEG or if you have come to it from PSD and do a save, then you lose the original file because it will write over it. So that's why it's always best to do a save as once you edit it. Yeah, that's what I like about when you round trip it from Lightroom, it gives you an option when you click on exit, if you, uh, if you wanna save it. If you click yes here, then of course, it saves as a PSD or a TIFF. Right, so, but, okay. Oh, put your points taken. So if you bring a JPEG or a PSD and you hit file save, it's going to overwrite your original PSD. Correct. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do right now is, um, so all these steps we've gone through are right there. Uh, as you guys probably know, uh, Joy's mom died about two months ago. So Joy and her sister and me occasionally are going out to her house, just going through stuff, trying to figure out what, what the two sisters would like to keep from, from their mom and dad. And we're pulling that out. But like anything else, there's some stuff we would like to try and sell online. So uh, Zef had some really nice clothes and evening gowns and stuff like that. Well, I can put those up against the background, shoot it with a a strobe through an umbrella and it looks really good. The problem with this one was right here was uh, Joy tried to hold around the edge of the thing holding up the uh, skirt underneath the jacket and uh, it just looked awful because it was bulging everywhere. So I told her, honey, just don't worry about it. Let's take two shots. And here's the two shots right here. And using those techniques that you learned this evening, it works just fine. But as Rick and I know in Lightroom, there's a wonderful tool in both now uh, where you basically select just the subject. So if you notice on these two images, I shot against a white background. So when I go up under uh, Photoshop and you select subject, it did a 100% job in picking what I wanted out of it. Now, what I did here was as I picked it, after I merged both images back down, uh, if you right click on the layer, right over here on the side, you can invoke the effects. So if you double click that, there's an option here for drop shadows. And with the drop shadow, of course you won't see it here, but the drop shadow takes uh, whatever that you've got selected and it puts a nice little drop shadow 
that you can open this up. You can open this up. Well, you can open it up and then and then from here, you can basically show if the if the shadow is going to be on this side or if you want the shadow on this side, you can literally move that shadow all the way around the image and you can make it larger or smaller as you do. So that's a bonus. That is not in the job aid. So enough about bonuses. But I just wanted to let you know uh, when, when Uma runs with, with the class for the rest of us in intermediate, th this is a great tool, especially now it's gotten better and better. Um, Charlie for green had a really nice shot that he did a radial blur. But the thing I wanna show you here, and you guys may remember this from competition night, I think it was last year. I basically took the photo of the daisy and there were a couple of other daisies underneath it. And what I did was I used the mask tool and I, and I duplicated that layer. So both layers were exactly the same. So on the top layer, I did a mask to where only this part of the daisy shone through. I only kept it on that layer. On the bottom layer, what I did was I clicked on that and I applied a radial filter and I spun it around. And that's how I got that effect. And then I did a merge and I basically changed it, anything that was yellow, you know, the daisy colors, I changed, changed it to a green. I just shifted the hue for the green over. And that's how I got the effect. So you don't have to have two layers uh, that are different to do a composite. You can have the same one and do some different stuff on the second layer. Like for example, if you're doing a portrait with someone, yeah, Photoshop's got a pretty decent blur. But if you wanted to, you could just pick your subject, select it, and then make it, well, you could do two layers. On the top layer, just pick you, and uh, that's cool. And then cut everything else out, mask it, or do Control J. And then on the bottom layer, you could add uh, something very similar to a clarity and move it to the negative value that would kind of blur the background just a little bit more. So please don't think you have, you have to have two different images. You can do two of the same and just have some fun. Uh, what I did on this one was uh, I had the image of the flowers. Uh, this is Georgia Tech a couple of years ago. Uh, I would do the walk to Starbucks twice a day. And they just had these beautiful flowers in the garden with the afternoon sun that was starting to, to darken the background. But there was a bunch of stuff out there. So uh, using the new select subject, I ran it on the old photograph. And I'd be darned if it didn't pick the entire flower exactly and a little bit of the stem off to the side. So I did that, hit Control J. So everything that was selected, it was moved up to a new layer. All the other stuff was not moved up with it. And I created a new layer and I filled it with black. And that's how I got this. So understand you can do a lot of fun things with all these layers. And uh, this evening, we only talked about the lighten layer. I, I, I got to tell you, if you guys want to go on a trip, Rick, I, I know it. I know we all three use Topaz. Ilos, are you using uh, Topaz? Yeah, we've got a little bit of it, yes. OK. Uh, topaz, I mean, I've never done psychedelics. But if you want to have some fun with your head, just take an image in the Topaz studio and go through all the filters. And quite honestly, it's, it's really just a variation of all the different blending modes and some other magic in their sauce that they use behind the scene. But if you're in Photoshop, there's a boatload of these guys that when you clicked on uh, layer, if you notice, you got darken, you got lighten and overlay and difference are really the, uh, the, the three main ones. And then you can also fool around with the hue and saturation down here as well. So you can have a lot of fun with the photograph just by going through and using it within Photoshop. So that's the only thing I would just wanted to bring to your attention there. So just to stay up with Hylos's excellent fireworks burst, on the night before, 
and uh, Rick and I were talking about this earlier. Uh, when we did the Johns Creek burst, they started during the blue hour. So whereas Marietta waited until it was totally black, uh, I was able to get a little bit of the blue hour in the photographs. And you guys guessed it by now, these are three separate shots and I used it and I just moved them over to the side and I did a little bit of masking on the bottom where the foregrounds were kind of lacking each other because I was moving the fireworks up and down just a little bit. So um, that's it. Uh, do you guys have any questions about what we covered? The only question I have is you are going to share that PDF with us, right? Say again? You're going to share that PDF with us that you were just going through, right? I am going to modify it to include OMIT's uh, adjustment curves yeah. layer. That makes sense. And so that's, I, a really, that's a really good workflow that even I could follow and I never use Photoshop. Yeah, I mean. But, uh, but, but those were a lot of steps you just took for someone who never uses Photoshop. I'm going to need the documents and the way I'm going to remember all that. Yeah, I understand. So Rick, what I tried to do on, on the documents here is anything that basically has a number in front of it, that means that's asking you to do something. Yeah, workflow stuff. But it's like anyone else. I'm sitting here talking, I'm putting all these little anecdotes uh, off to the side. So I've tried to block those so that you know when you're doing the workflow, all you gotta do is look at the numbers and just go through them. And uh, so I, I just tried to do it. And I just tried to add photos for you guys. So as you go through and see Hylos, how much better I did on this one than the, than the one that, yep. uh, so well, I'm just incredibly <laughs> inconsistent. But uh, I tried to save all the screenshots for you so that you can kind of look at it while you're going along. Oh, you, so, did, you did an amazing job of documenting all this. So really you know, the, the effort that went into that. So just, you know, it's, it's something I would like if, if I were doing it. So I'm not expecting great things when you do it intermediate. I'm going to 